Night Dreams Talk Radio Network brings you the world paranormal news with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum with the Paranormal and World Changes News. While the Pentagon says, oh, by the way, our secret UFO program wasn't about UFOs after all. After two years of constant media buzz following a bombshell announcement in December in 2017 that the Pentagon had been investigating UFOs or UAPs as they prefer to call them, now the government dropped another bombshell yesterday, or perhaps we should call it a curveball by saying none of that was related to UFO or UAPs investigations. Okay, NASA has sent an improved emotion uh, emotion sensing robot to the space station. Now, in space, there's no one that can hear you scream or cry yourself to sleep or at night because you're lonely until now. Over the weekend, the SpaceX cargo ship delivered an emotion sensing AI robot to the International Space Station in a second attempt to provide astronauts with an empathetic companion for long space flights. That's, that's reassuring. Also, Climate change, oceans running out of oxygen as temperatures rise. Climate change and nutrient pollution are driving the oxygen from our oceans and threatening many species of fish. That's the conclusion of the biggest study of its kind undertaken by conservation group IUCN. Next on the agenda, mega blaze near Sydney is too big to put out. Uh, again, these fires are huge. The mega blaze rage, raging across a 37-mile front northwest of Sydney cannot currently be put out, Australian fire officials have warned. The fire across almost 1,150 square miles is just an hour's drive from the nation's most populous city. Also, a man in Nevada, uh, his DNA has changed after bone marrow transplant. Now, he has leukemia. So he had a procedure done bone with the uh, bone marrow transplant, and a few months later, his DNA he, they have found in, uh, from his lips and other parts of his body has changed. It's, not, it's changed to something totally else, something else, to, or of his donator, uh, donor of the blood, blood marrow. Also, North Korea conducts important tests as one once dismantled rocket launch site. Now, it wasn't supposedly for the... For nuclear weapons, however, what are they testing these rockets for? Could it be to see how big of a rocket they need to maybe launch a, a something nuclear? We don't know. This week's full moon will occur on 12-12 at 12-12 a.m. Eastern Time. That's the first time in a long time that that has happened. Also, there is a volcano that has went off in New Zealand, and there's five uh, reported dead and many more that could be dying. It's, uh, there's pictures all over the Internet, and it's, it's very deadly. And next news break, top of the hour. Night Dreams Talk Radio, After Dark, wants to give a big shout-out to all the truckers that listen to our show. <laughs> And again, with all you truckers, you know, we would not even be on the air if it wasn't for you guys. So a big shout out. A lot of people, you know, don't give you, well, the, um, what you should be hearing. If it wasn't for you guys, seriously, we wouldn't have our, you know, Walmart, uh, the grocery stores. They wouldn't have merchandise. They wouldn't have food. I mean, you guys do a lot. Anyway, not tonight, James, we got Tobias Whalen coming on in about a minute talking about cryptic reports. And then our first guest tonight is going to be back by demand from you, the listeners, Jason Offit. He's the author of American Monsters. And then, well, our last guest tonight is William Pullen. And we're going to be talking about UFOs. Are they real? So, I mean, we got a good show tonight all lined up for you, the listener, on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. Hey, James, how you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing, Mr. Gary? Yeah, the latest on uh, on the news on that volcano that erupted in New Zealand is no survivors at all. Oh, really? I, it, you've got the update more before I got on the air then. Okay. Yeah, I subscribe to a, a two different news services. That's where, I, you know, 
among everything mm-hmm. else. And yes, that's what they're saying. There was no survivors at all. That's 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 too bad. You, I do know that um, bef- right before it erupted, there was there were like five people I seen inside the crater, and they know that those people didn't make it for sure. But um, yeah, that's too bad. Yeah, well, Earth changes. I mean, those volcanoes can go off at any time. Well, let's bring Jason on right now. Hey, Jason, my friend, how you doing? How you doing, Jason? How you doing tonight? You there? Oh, can you hear me, Gary? I can, but what was that weird noise in the background? I do not know. That uh, that was some kind of weird glitch in the phone. It's it's interesting, actually. Right before I called you, uh, I had just a bizarre um, like electrical glitch with my computer too so i don't i don't know exactly what's uh what's going on there um if uh you know the the nsa is is busy monitoring us or what but that was weird well how are you my friend i am doing really good but you know what why don't we try having you call right back and see if it gets rid of that weird noise that is the most weirdest thing isn't that james yeah oh yeah i can hear it big time it sounds like i don't know what (laughs) yeah well, All right, I will. I will uh, call right back. Okay, sir. Maybe it's aliens invaded his phone line. That that could be, and um, we all know how that 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 ends up. It ends up uh, bad connections, and when we get to certain buzzwords, it we can't hear what the guest is saying. I know that is that was one of the weirdest sounds yet <laughs> I ever heard. I mean, there he is. We're going to take it right now, Jason. Hopefully. Yeah, that is weird. Is that better? Yeah, as long as you're talking. But, you know, I'm hearing myself even talk. Do you have the volume up or are you on a headset or something? No, it's literally the, the exact same way I, I I call every time. I don't I don't know what the issue could be. Uh, atmospheric conditions from the ionic sphere. Uh, well, do you have, uh, let's, let's go. If, I think when you're talking, we don't have the problem. Uh, so oh, okay. if you want to give the report to the listeners of, well, cryptic report, then let's, let's, let's go for it. All right. Sounds good. So, you know, uh, recently we have received a, uh, spate of sightings around the area of, uh, Chicago's International uh, Airport, the the O'Hare International Airport. Uh, you know, it's a world famous airport, and it's it's huge. And uh, interestingly enough, there have been several uh, uh, credible sightings in in that area. It started uh, back at the beginning of October, actually, when a sighting report came into the Mutual UFO Network. Uh, and so that was submitted to uh, MUFON by somebody who wanted to stay anonymous. And, and he told them that he was uh, a rideshare driver and he was sitting in his car uh, waiting for his, his next call. And he was parked on the, the side of the road near uh, Tollbooth Plaza 31. And that's a spot where uh, many uh, driveshare drivers like to park. So they're close to the O'Hare terminals. And that uh, allows them to, to pick up rides from the airport. And it's, it's just very convenient for him. And so he was sitting there uh, to sort of fiddling uh, uh, around in his car, and he sees something walk out of the trees. Uh, he described this thing as a tall creature, about uh, six to seven feet tall and kind of hunched over, and said that uh, it walked with a sort of gait almost like a waddle. Uh, he described this, this being as being completely black, and that when it swiveled its its head, so we could see its eyes. It had these two bright red, glowing red eyes. And uh, so, further, this thing opened a, a, a pair of, of large wings that he said were at least as wide as it was tall, and it began to flap them and took off and, and headed south. And so he was initially contacted by a uh, Mufon. Uh, uh, field investigator, and, and, and I uh, know the, the Illinois State Director there, Sam Maranto, uh, for MUFON, and so I, I I got a hold of Sam and sort of asked him about their uh, in investigation and, and, and what it was it, it was leading to, and, and 
on their end, it, it wasn't really leading to much. Uh, they really couldn't get the, the, the witness to speak to him. Um, you know, Sam told me that uh, the, the field investigator and the witness had exchanged a number of emails, but that the witness was uh, refusing to, to speak to them on the phone or, or meet with them. And, and he thought that was um, sort of suspicious. I think he expected the, the witness to be more forthcoming. Now, uh, it wasn't much longer than that, that all communication was, was severed with them. And uh, my, my friend and colleague, Lon Strickler, over at Phantoms and Monsters, actually had the witness contact him uh, just after that. And so he was contacted by email. And this witness had some real issues with how he was treated by the MUFON field investigator. So according to this witness, like he was more or less berated by this field investigator um, who essentially said that, and this is according to the uh, uh, witness, all of the actual communication, uh, like those emails were all kept private. Sam wasn't going to share those with me, um, you know, uh, basically because of the uh, anonymity involved between the, the, the witness and the, the uh, field investigator. And I got that. But this is according to the witness. He was basically saying that this field investigator had, had berated him, you know, saying that he would never believe him if he, you know, didn't provide his full name and like a photograph and, and, and some really just sort of in, invasive, uh, uh, in, inappropriate, you know, stuff. And uh, so, you know, he, he, he got a hold of Lon, and, you know, Lon's pretty good with, with uh, people. And so he, he got talking with him, and they exchanged some emails, and then Lon was able to speak to this guy over the phone, um, which I personally believe lends a little bit of credence to, to what this witness was saying, because, um, you know, if, if Lon could, could talk him into it, then, um, you know, you, you have to wonder if maybe the approach that was taken by, by MUFON might have been a little harsh. But, uh, you know, Lon was able to, to get a hold of him. And, uh, you know, he, he was able to, uh, you know, confirm the, the, the witness's report, uh, you know, um, really just get a, a few extra details of, of, about the, the sighting area and everything. And, and since then, uh, you know, we, we've received several other uh, seemingly credible sightings from, from that area. So 